Now then, my lovelies, I up me ducks and drakes. You all in good form? I am. I'm excited. I've got some corkers lined up for you tonight. Everyone a winner. I think. We'll, we'll, we'll mark them at the end. Oh, I see that Sally's on the wine, eh? I'm down the garden and it's all going on in the house. Mm, oh, Yvonne Finney's in the house. We've got people from Devon to Easington up in Northumberland. Oh, I think Stuart's in from Scotland. We've, got the, we've covered the whole country. Any Irish there? Have well, we got Brazil on board? Not yet. You're very welcome. Lovely to see you and feel you and be with you. And relax. I want to start with the Bansurai. And first track on Time Stand Still, I think this one is. I haven't looked at the sleeve for a long time. Just played the tunes. It's called Heian, which is the uh, Japanese word for peace. And I thought, it's Remembrance Sunday. I want to counter the fact that some guy, big big wig, is on the news saying, yeah, after a pandemic, you usually get a world war. No! <laughs> no, mate, you're wrong. You've got to be wrong. Look, maybe the world just got a bit more potentially peaceful. I don't know. Anyway, in our little community, we'll do the, our very best to keep things peaceful. Thank you. 
peace. What a word. It's one of the most important words in the world, isn't it? Oh, dear. And uh, the next track has also got a very, very weighty word in the title. It's one that you may remember from a long time ago. Colin Blunstone and the Zombies. Piece called I don't believe in miracles, but we do. <laughs> in the Zen, don't we do? Yeah, I think he was. Uh, it reads like it was a bitter breakup. This song. But we'll. Uh, we're not getting the words. We're just getting the melody. So we'll leave out the don't. And we'll <laughs> we'll say. I believe in miracles. Whatever. It's a great song. A Paul Birchall arrangement. In fact, if you listen carefully, because I, I forgot to cut the beginning off this one, so it's the original take from the studio. I think we got this one in one take. So, um, well, they did. I don't know if I did. So <laughs> you'll hear them shouting out, Hey, we rolling? Is the tape rolling? I mean, tapes don't roll anymore these days, but as we still say that.
actually the words are not so pessimistic so I, was, I kind of half know them that I've got on, on the screen as well and there's a bit of optimism there the words that turned me round were from your song who's going to light the way when things go wrong mm, but there is some gloomy stuff in there as well <laughs> I'm not going to read all the words yeah let's hope they got back together <laughs> uh, what's next on the track list <laughs> well last night had it not been for lockdown some of us would have got together wouldn't we at the ropery and uh, Mr Robin Smith was going to trek up from Cheltenham and we would have been doing a real gig and actually uh, I didn't realise it. You know how dreams break, and when I was thinking about thinking about meeting meeting up with you guys and having Robin on, and that we should have been at the ropery last night. And as soon as I thought the word ropery, I remember it broke my dream. And I dreamt last night that I was playing there. Actually, not with Robin. It was with the Snake Davis Trio. Sorry, Robin. But inside the venue, it was all grass. You guys were sort of chilling out on the grass there. It all made sense at the time. <laughs> so anyway, <coughs> I want to summon Robin from the vaults. It seems only right. It's, it's one that um, we did a little while ago. Beautiful, beautiful piece, Ennio Morricone. Gabriel or Gabriel? Gabriel's over. Right, 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 right. Let me make sure I can find him. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Oh, uh, what a musician that guy is. Lovely man. Bit crazy. <laughs> Robin Smith. You will meet him. We will do it, honestly. These things are worth waiting for. He is determined, and so am I. What we might do, perhaps, you know, if things don't unlock um, as quickly as we'd all love them to, and because he and I are allowed to work, but you're not allowed to come and see us at a gig. So but I thought if, if I could persuade him to drive up here, capture him, we'd do a whole night, a whole night stream, the two of us. Um, so we'll work on that. That, but I think that'd be great. Get rid of my music. Quit Adobe Reader. Yeah, oh, beautiful piece. Morricone. Great man. It's not a starfish, it's a leaf. Starfish. <laughs> I was making an effort. I thought it'd be nice to have a leaf behind me and a few, you know. They all follow me favourite aces look. <sighs> I try. Hi, Diane. Yeah, I love the soprano. Quite a lot of soprano tonight. I think I've got one more. <laughs> oh, you guys, where's your sense of romance? My leaves look like spiders, do they, in fancy dress? Right, I've got to make more effort on the uh, backdrop and stuff. <laughs> Okie dokie. I promise. Ah, right. Just looked at my little list. Now, at least two, maybe more of you, have requested this tune along the way along this long path, these 85 shows, these 85 evenings that we've spent together. And I thought, right, I better do it. And uh, it's, a, it's a sweet melody, my Mr. Ackerbilk clarinet player. And uh, now I don't play clarinet, so I tried it on soprano. And uh, I didn't really cut it, you know. So I thought, right, I will make the effort. Because I do possess a clarinet, I just can't play it. So for you, I kill the bull. So I know it was Ian that requested this but many moons ago. And it's also for the uh, guardian angel up in Driffield. And anybody else that's requested it. And uh, if it's really, really bad, I'll do it again on soprano sax sometime. Not really building this up well, am I? I'll tell you some clarinet stories afterwards. Right? See if I can even get a sound out of it. <laughs> oh, well, it's making a noise. So you will remember this tune, it's called A Stranger on the Shore.
I got to the end. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sally's laughing, you see. Right, well, two world premieres in... Well, I've never played that tune. And I've never ever performed the clarinet in, on the clarinet in public. I think it's fairly safe to say I never will again. So, you were here, folks. Now, yesterday, I had the pliers, and uh, you see, um, you see that that bit there. I had to get the pliers on that and give it a right old bend because I could only get about half the notes. And uh, so I never learned the clarinet, as I think I just d demonstrated. And it's not I don't like it in the right hands. It's it's fantastic, but my hands are not the right hands, and I'm playing too many instruments already. And so when I, my first proper job, well, I've actually never had a proper job, but as near as I ever got, I worked the cruise boats. For three years, Cunard and then Pino, uh, which is another story for another night. <laughs> but um, all the guys in those bands, you know, those cruise ship bands, they said, hey, Snakey Boy, you got your flute and you got your saxophone. You need a clarinet, mate. I thought, oh, no. He said, you get loads more gigs, you know, when you get back home if you got play clarinet. I thought, all right, then. And there was some bloke selling one. I bought it cheap anyway. And I had a little girl, got me tuned a day book. But it just wasn't me, so I got I had a really, really terrible, awful experience on it in a recording studio in London for with a guy called Barrington Feelong who wrote all the music for Morse. He hired me to play a big sax feature on a film he was doing. And he said, uh, have you got clarinet? I said, I've got one, but I can't play it. He said, no, nah, no, nah. he said, just just a little bit on this rack man and off thing. He said, yeah, it'd be easy. And it wasn't, and it was horrible. And so I was flying away to another country. This, But as soon as I got back from America, I remembered what had happened. And I saw my mate Keith Hopwood, who runs a studio up in Cheshire. I said, Keith, you've always been banging on about the clarinet, how you love it. Here you go, mate. Have a go. This is yours. I gave it away and I thought, great. And a year later, I, I keeping up, it's all right, <laughs> sorry. I've started, so I'll finish. A year later, my lovely sister-in-law, Anthea, said, um, I think it was Charlotte, my niece, she's got the opportunity to learn clarinet in school. Um, I said, and I said, I know where there's a clarinet, I'm going to find out if it's being used. And I rang Keith up and I said, have you even played that clarinet? It's been a year. He said, no, not even got it out of the box. I said, right, I want it back. So I, then I gave it away again. And uh, Anthea tried to destroy it. Look. She ran over it in the car. Can you can you actually see, see that? Can you see the state the box is in? She gave it a proper full running over in the car. I thought, great. I say, it's gone forever. It survived. So it bounced back to me again because she gave up. But uh, who would like a clarinet for Christmas? <laughs> Maybe I can get away, get give it away again. Oh, this made me happy. Yeah, the Inspector Morse guy. He's a very nice guy. And uh, clever, very clever man. <laughs> so that's the clarinet. The licorice stick, as we call it. Because obviously, that's what it looks like. It'd be more useful to me if it was made of licorice. <laughs> I actually did appear on stage with a clarinet once. I was still in music college. But I never played it. Um, quite often, our le our le college lecturers would uh, use us as deputies, you know, as to fill in on their commercial jobs when they wanted a night off or they had a better gig to go to. And <laughs> my one of my teachers was doing uh, a week with Gene Pitney at Wakefield Theatre Club. This is going back, 
and he said, uh, "Snakey," he said, "Could you, uh, could you do Thursday for me?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, could, could I have a look at the music first? He said, "Yeah, it's alto and clarinet." I said, "Oh no, can't do it. I haven't got clarinet." He said, well, "It was only a little bit. I'll tell you what." He said, "I'll lend you my clarinet. Just sort of hold it to your mouth. Don't don't actually play it. Nobody will know." <laughs> So that's what I did. I felt a right fraud. 30 quid, though. Anyway. <laughs> oh, dear. So, do you remember? I think it was all Kevin's fault. We let him off because he pulled such a good pint. But um, I think he asked me more than once. Was it you, Kev? For Albatross. And... Uh, Remember, we d I did it just once. So there was loads of fakies in it, loads of fake snakes. And uh, it took me ages to work out how to do it. Uh, sometimes backing tracks are okay, sometimes they're absolutely not. I didn't want to do it with the backing track, so... Um, I got the whole gang of, of fake snakes out. And uh, we stitched it, stitched something together. So, But I thought I'd like to do it again, because I've kept the fake snakies on my hard drive. And it was fun. And it's a great tune in it. So um, we'll have a go. We'll wake up the fake snakes. <laughs> yeah, it's not a clarinet, it's a boomerang. I like that, Richard. Hey, Yak, stop winding me up, man. Oh, being trolled. Come on, fight back, fight back. So let me see if we can summon the, the fake snakes. Right. And one, two, three. <laughs>
Yes, Kevin. For you, I kill the bull. Took flipping ages. Days. <laughs> it did took days. But it was fun. It's a good tune. I've got another couple of stories about um, disasters with instruments. You know, the, the uh, clarinet was genuinely driven over by Anthea. Oh, tiny box. Now Snakey is big again. <coughs> and uh, Brian Hargreaves, who I'm sure you know and love, plays drums in the uh, classic sax solos lineup. We played the lovely Square Chapel Art Centre in Halifax, which um, we played many, many times. They always get a lovely crowd there. It's a great, great gaff. And uh, I remember him driving over his snare drum, luckily at the end of the night, not the beginning. But I think that survived as well. His cases are good, some of them. And uh, I <laughs> long, long, long time ago, well, really very early days, uh, I lived in Liverpool and uh, I was playing a club called the Gladray. And uh, I was on the stage, although it wasn't the stage, it was just the corner of the room. And we were playing away and the drummer was taking a solo and uh, one of the audience members was really, really digging it. And this is how long ago it was. He wanted to give the drummer a pound, so he had a pound note. And he ran into the performance area to give the pound to the drummer, which he had to put in his mouth because he was flailing away. But he stepped on my flute on the way, my wooden flute, which you've seen me play the black one. If you look carefully, the the tail joint, the end joint, isn't <laughs> not straight anymore. But it's still played. I, I meant to get it fixed, but I never did. <laughs> and I've had my saxes knocked over by stagehands many times. And once this is in Liverpool again, I'm I'm doing it now. I'm, I'm talking with the sax on the sling. Anyway, the sling broke and the sax just smashed down. It was a concrete floor, so that was. Um, Sad and expensive. But, um, yeah. Unhappy days. But they bounce back, the old saxophones. Haiku time. This one's from the anonymous dock. Some seaweeds or wild seasonal bouquet. Joy in the small things. And accompanied was... Um, picture of a beautiful bouquet of flowers so today we can think about our acer leaves that's all you're getting thank you doc and then from jen inspired by um sally's request that she sent out on our behalf have you, have you received that check your inboxes we've got this uh idea for the hundredth show that we'd like you all to record a little clip of yourselves doing what you do or doing what you'd like to do within reason <laughs> in your homes with a bit of time stand still in the background. 10, 20 seconds will do. And we'll stitch them all together at the beginning of the 100th show. So uh, Anyway, Jen, so inspired is Jen <coughs> that she's written a haiku about this. Snake sends a request. A video, if you please. Creative minds stir. Creative minds stir. Those are your minds. So it's a bit of fun, but do that for us. And uh, if you haven't had the email, or if you're not on our mailing list, give us a shout. Sally at snakedavis.rocks. I'm going to repeat that. Sally at snakedavis.rocks. Dot rocks. Give us a shout and we'll send you the instructions what to do. And uh, it'd be a bit of fun. <laughs> and gets even more exciting for you sax players and singers, which is everybody, because we can all sing and we can't all play a sax, but we can all sing. I'm going to do a collaborative arrangement so that we can all pitch in a bit of singing, a bit of saxing, 
I'll have that sorted by next weekend. So I know you all want to do that. And maybe we'll finish the show with that. <laughs> yeah. What are you saying about that? Ah, oh, yeah. Helen's guitar survived. I had a sax which didn't survive in its case, but that was Ryanair, so they can destroy anything. <laughs> oh, Danny's lost at Scrabble. That was so harsh. <laughs> Somebody's praising Joe. And Joe is he's he is the man. Y you know, um you can't have failed to notice we <laughs> we had some serious blackouts on Friday. And then uh, I remembered the week before we, we had we started with no sound, didn't we? And I have to tell you, because I'm pretty honest, when it goes wrong it's my fault. And then it's Joe who fixes it or tells me how to. Ah dear. Yeah, Sue's already in. She sent hers in already. Teacher's pet. <laughs> Go, Sue. <laughs> yep, more music, more music, more music. What we got? We got Robin Smith again. In the sound, but not in vision. He did me a lovely track for me to sing Georgia over. I thought, Georgia's, <laughs> Georgia's in the news a little bit. It's a, it's a recount, isn't it? Great song. But I can't change the words to make Georgia suddenly be about the amount of votes. <laughs> It'll be in our minds. Where are you, Robin? No. Yes, mate. I said, Georgia, Georgia.
smile tenderly Still in peaceful dreams I see the road leads back to Sir Georgia Sir Georgia Georgia, Georgia No peace That old sweet song keeps Georgia. Oh, an old sweet song keeps Georgia. Just an old sweet song keeps Georgia. Keeps Georgia. Right. Nice. <laughs> great, great song. <laughs> uh, I think we've got time for a couple more. Rick Davis in the house. You're in the house all the time, mate, in you? Because you're vulnerable. Well, in the garden, maybe. You take care, mate. How's those teeth? You know, when you're young, you, you swap crazy stories of wild things that you've done. <laughs> when you get a bit older, me and Rick, great sax player from over the water, you are, mate, aren't you? We just discuss implants and how to save your teeth so they still work with the saxophone. Yeah, man, enjoy life. You're right, Minas. <laughs> It will happen, Robin and Snake, in the flesh, <coughs> sometime, before too long. Ah, oh dear. Yeah, we're still going, we're still going. I think, um, let's fit two in. <coughs> I wanted to do this, another tune from Time Stand Still, the current album which even though you've all got, you'd be buying extra copies to send to people for Christmas. I know you will. I can sense it, along with the other albums. And we have, courtesy of Mr. Phil Udall, the Stokesy, Stokesley King, 30 copies of the live album, a lot of people's favourite album, and, and actually one of my very favourite albums, which has been out of print for quite a few years. I made this in 2009. And uh, recorded live at the Old Town Hall in Durham. We have 30 copies available. You can get those from the website too. So I'm going to have a crack at the last track. It's like a bookend, isn't it? The last track from Time Stand Still. Which, uh, oh, that first one, Heian co-wrote and produced that one with um, my very good friend, Mr. Ernie Wood champion of North Yorkshire up on the moors there and this next one is written and arranged and produced with uh, Mr Guy Allison of Los Angeles and boy is Mr Guy Allison one happy man this weekend <laughs> he is very happy so it's called In Memory I thought fitting for Remembrance Sunday
In Memory, final track from uh, Time Standstill. Huh. Yeah, quite an emotional weekend, and I don't know, this might sound mad, but it suddenly hit me the thought that, you know, unless there's radical changes, you and I are going to spend quite a lot of Christmas together, probably, see a bit of each other. And so that'll be great. I hope. I'm looking forward to it anyway. Just hit me. Yeah. What a thought. <laughs> you stuck with me. Hey, hey! One for the road. And uh, I finish with a big one. We're talking about heroes, fallen heroes, and I thought, why not finish with the theme tune from Local Hero? Uh, it's called Going Home.
Yes, my lions and lionesses. Thanks, guys. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for uh, ending the weekend in the Zen Den. Big thanks to Mr. Robin Smith. Fakey, thanks for coming out of your cage. Joe, my hero. Sally, my other hero. And you lot. Yeah, join us next weekend. Oh, we didn't decide what to do next weekend. Should we do uh, Friday and Sunday again, or should we do Saturday and Sunday? I don't know. We were trying to uh, not lose the ratings war with Strictly, but I don't know if it was relevant. It might have been Johnson. We'll let you know. <laughs> Probably Friday and Sunday, I reckon. Yeah. The decision is made. Unless anybody uh, overrules me. I'm not answering that one. I'll let somebody else answer that. <laughs> ah, dear. You're all amazing. Look after each other. Take really good care. Be kind. Be safe. But be happy. And I'll see you next weekend.